Trump wants to appoint Elon Musk as his advisor in case winning election. The US presidential candidate Donald Trump has been in talks with Twitter CEO Elon Musk for several months regarding the possible appointment of the latter as an advisor if Trump returns to the White House, citing the Wall Street Journal. Journalists spoke with several sources who confirmed the discussions between the SpaceX founder and the former president, stating that Musk now calls Trump directly from his mobile phone several times a month. Although the negotiations are preliminary in nature and sources warn that they may fall through, Trump has expressed interest in finding a way to make Musk more involved in politics, possibly related to border security or the economy. Two issues Musk has publicly commented on. On his part, Musk could help Trump in his re-election bid, not only by making a contribution to his campaign coffers, but also by leveraging the power and influence of other wealthy donors, although he has declined public endorsements. They first met this year at a donor breakfast in early March held at Mont Sorrel, billionaire Nelson Pelz's residence in Palm Beach, Florida. The meeting was first reported by the New York Times, noting that Trump was seeking financial contributions. According to the Wall Street Journal, during the meeting, the topic of Musk becoming an advisor to Trump was raised, with one source likening it to the advisory role of former Marvel chief Isaac Perlmutter at the Department of Veterans Affairs in the Trump administration. Among other topics discussed by Trump and Musk were the US Space Force, created during Trump's first presidential term, as well as Musk's technological company's electric vehicle manufacturing, which Trump criticized at his early rallies and immigration. The presidential election in the United States is scheduled for November the 5th, 2024. Donald Trump is the Republican candidate and the incumbent President Joe Biden is the Democratic candidate. Call for Georgia to send troops to Ukraine Opening a second front against Russia is also on agenda. Georgia has been repeatedly pushed into a conflict with Russia, with certain friends and foes urging Tbilisi to impose sanctions on the country and even to deploy troops to Ukraine, the president of the Georgian parliament, Shalva Papawashvili, has said. Speaking to reporters, the House Speaker said the country had been repeatedly bombarded with such demands, both in public and in private. Certain friends and foes have been pushing us into this so that we would send fighters to Ukraine, which would have directly meant war with Russia, he explained. Top Ukrainian officials, including the former head of the National Security Council, Alexei Danilov, have repeatedly urged Georgia to open a second front against Russia, with the calls consistently shot down by Tbilisi. While Papawashvili did not mention any actors in particular, he implied that members of the US-led NATO bloc were among them. With such actions demanded for some unknown reason from Georgia, NATO states themselves were abstaining from sending in their own military, he said. Apart from demands to enter the conflict directly, Georgia has for long been facing pressure to join Western sanctions against Moscow, he also noted. Non-state actors have been pushing Georgia into war with Russia as well, Papawashvili claimed, stating that non-governmental organizations that held rallies in Tbilisi with similar calls have also demanded our troops be sent to Ukraine. The speaker's jab at the NGOs comes as the country continues to experience domestic unrest and foreign pressure over its draft foreign agents legislation requiring these organizations and individuals receiving over 20% of their funding from abroad to register and disclose their sources of income. The controversial bill ended up being shelved amid mass protests and foreign pressure last year with the new attempt to pass its slightly modified version running into the same troubles. However, the Georgian government has stood its ground and vowed to adopt the bill no matter what. While Tbilisi has maintained an explicitly neutral stance on the Ukrainian conflict, a sizable number of mercenaries originating from the country have been fighting on Kiev's behalf. Russian soldiers are being trained to fly drones in Syria by instructors from Iran and Hezbollah. In early April, Ukraine attacked with drones a plant in the Alabuga Special Economic Zone in the Yelabuga region of the Republic of Tatarstan, where drones are produced. This marked a new stage in the drone war. The target was a high-tech college and manufacturing complex on the Russian steppes, where Moscow is seeking to increase weapons production. The said plant aims to produce 6,000 Shahed attack drones per year, writes the Wall Street Journal. 
journalists emphasize that drones are playing an increasingly important role in current conflicts. Russia has carried out dozens of attacks using Iranian Shahed drones. Their low cost, compared to the expensive missiles Ukraine uses, means air defense units sometimes resort to machine guns to shoot them down. Shortly after the Russian invasion in February 2022, Ukraine successfully deployed Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drones. In response, Moscow turned to Iran for access to its drones. Since then, the Russian Federation has launched more than 4,000 Shahed attack drones. While the first models came directly from Iran, the latest strikes were carried out with devices made entirely in Russia. Military experts say since then, Moscow has used key alliances to build up its defense capabilities. In early April, senior Biden administration officials said China had provided Russia with optics, microelectronics, and other dual-use materials that could be used in drones. In September, Ukraine said Russia was receiving engines for its Shahed attack drones from China, naming the supplier as a company called Beijing Micropilot UAV Flight Control Systems. But also a key factor is the deepening of Russia's ties with Iran and a large number of African states. The Iranian drone production facility, located in several hangars in the Alabuga Special Economic Zone on a tributary of the Volga, demonstrates how different elements come together. Russian businessmen struck an agreement to build a drone factory in late 2022 when they flew to Tehran with a lucrative offer $1.7 billion, partially paid for in gold bullion. Unusual conditions confirmed by the Wall Street Journal citing U.S. security officials. According to a contract between Russian plant managers and their Iranian partners, which was leaked to the Prana network and independently confirmed by two British government advisors, the Alabuga plant is to produce 6,000 Shahed attack drones a year, in addition to surveillance drones. According to Ukrainian military intelligence, Russian soldiers are already being trained to fly drones in Syria by instructors from both the Revolutionary Guard and the Iranian-backed militant group Hezbollah. According to the authors, to expand production of drones, Russia needs skilled workers to assemble them.